Please sit, dear people of God. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have all heard of power, the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. We are also familiar with the word authority, which is defined as the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. Power is simply the ability of someone to influence people or something to control how they do things. Authority comes with a legal or formal right that enables the individual who has it to issue commands or make decisions. Both power and authority have their limits and they are not absolute. The Greek word for power is dynamis, which is dynamite. And this is the kind of power that God has. With God, it is absolute. The power and authority of God are neither challenged nor dictated by law or statute. They are absolute. He says it and it comes to being. Ezekiel spoke the words of the Lord and they are direct from God. In Hebrew, we normally say, Ko Amar Yahweh, thou sayest the Lord. And it's not like somebody trying to paraphrase it or try to um, um, sort of put everything together in a very short sentence or two or three sentences to say that this is what God is saying, trying to explain what God is saying. But what it was all about was that these were the exact words of God. Verbatim. Every word that God said is being pronounced here. Now these were God's words and I quote, I the Lord have spoken and I will do it. Ezekiel chapter 17 verse 24. God tells the people his decision, and this cannot be altered or challenged. This is his decision, and his words are, I will do it. In the gospel, according to Mark, Jesus speaks to the people so that they will know the operations of the kingdom of heaven and to show them how powerful God is. That he can make the smallest of, the, of seeds become huge and more significant and benefit many. Now God told Ezekiel that he would take a shoot from the highest branch and plant it on a very high mountain. This is God's decision. And the most crucial point is that he will grow it himself. He's not asking anyone to do it, but that he will do it himself. This planting will be done on the high mountain of Israel. The high mountain of Israel, which can be explained as the pinnacle of humanity, where all will see nothing hidden, so that its benefits will be to many. This plant will sprout branches, bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. This tells us that the shoot was not taken from a noble cedar. So it is God who will turn the life of this shoot around, making it a noble cedar. A typical example is somebody who is not part 
of the line or the bloodline of those who are supposed to be king. God turns this person's life around to become part of this line so that he becomes a king. So it is God who is doing all this. This is the authority and power of God to turn things around without asking for permission from anyone. The noble cedar will benefit all, including every kind of bird. Every winged creature will rest in the shade of its branches. God continues to do this in our lives when we avail ourselves to him. He is always ready to turn our lives around and prepare to make us better people. When man fell, he quickly came to the aid of man and gave us his only begotten son. His son from the shoot of Jesse moved us from a state of hopelessness to a state of confidence because we were assured of salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 17 verse 24 says, and I quote, All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. Ezekiel 17 verse 24. Who can challenge him? No one. He is God. And his power and authority is absolute. This is the God we serve. He makes and unmakes. So regardless of the hard times we may be going through, he can bring us to a place of hope and strength. No matter the challenges, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering, he will turn it around. We just have to have faith and rely on him. At all times. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct our paths. Let us live a life that is just, because God wants us to be just people so that we can flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. He will make us thrive because we will be planted in the Lord's house and our God's court. We will bear fruit and never lose relevance even in our old age because the all-powerful God will continue to be with us. We must continue to be people of the Spirit who do away with worldly things and are constantly living by faith and not by sight. Those living by sight get confused and lose confidence in the Lord. We must exile ourselves from the body to make our home with the Lord. We should always understand that we will all be brought to the court of the Lord so that the life we lead will determine our reward. It is the Lord who controls the universe. And so everything we plant flourishes through him. Everything that we do in life, whatever decision that we make can only come to pass if God wills. Nothing can grow without him. Nothing can bear fruit. It is essential always to present everything we do to him because he alone is in charge and has the authority and power. He alone can make us valuable and beneficial. Our growth and development are in his hands. 
as he made the master seed the greatest of all the trees, even as a tiny seed, he will also make us more significant in all we do. We should just trust in him. It is God who gives the increase, not us. Every level or position we find ourselves in is just by the grace of God. It is not by our strength or power. It is just by the grace. This is why we, as Christians, must give God all the glory. He has power and authority. It is my prayer, dear people of God, that we all continue to remain under the authority and power of God so that our sources can be assured. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.